Welcome to the Wisdom Factory, a forum for pe people who have knowledge, experience, and wisdom to share with the world. We're in Season 2, which is all about wisdom technologies. And this is Episode number 9, and today we have invited Elsa Malou, an outstanding expert in Middle East topics, and we will talk with her about how to create peace in the Middle East using her understanding and wisdom. And the Wisdom Factory, that's us, <laughs> is hosted by our nonprofit, which is called Paradiso Integrale, which is in Italy, in Umbria. And we also hold retreats here, mm. and we have guest rooms. And when you are here between Florence and Rome, please stop by. If you're between Florence and Rome, you're nearby. Yeah. Stop in. Yeah, that's what I said. So, before we present, yes. please, uh, Elsa, shall we talk a little bit about ourselves? I think so. Quickly, before people lose interest. Okay. Yes. The, we created the Wisdom Factory because we are inspired so much by the integral worldview of Ken Wilber and what we will hear later, Spiral Dynamics, created by Claire Graves and Don Beck. So, we wanted to bring it out into the world. And so we created the Wisdom Factory, which wants to create and uh, to create to promote wisdom, which is not only in integral but also dynamics and other and technologies. Other, and you and me and everybody. And her. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. We want to give you the opportunity to experience what people do inside an integral worldview, what they create in their niches, uh -huh. can you say. Okay. And if you want to know more about us, our personal website is thepowerofrelationship.com. Uh -huh. okay. So please subscribe to our newsletter at thewisdomfactory.de. Now that's confusing. This is .de, uh -huh. where you can download a free, free gift, an iBook, also available as a PDF. <coughs> It's the result of our first season of the Wisdom Factory. And we will create other iBooks <coughs> from this one. So, yes. And also, please join our community on G+, if you are interested in these topics and if you want to discuss further on it. Yeah. And now, my voice is getting crazy because I'm at the anxious part where I, I talk about our guest. <laughs> and Elsa Malouf is an author, a theoretist, and a consultant. She is credited with introducing Spiral Dynamics Integral and the entire integral framework to the Middle East. A long-term member of Evolutionary Leaders, she serves alongside global thinkers like Deepak Chopra, Jean Houston, and Barbara Marks Hubbard. Her writings appear in the Huffington Post, Integral Leadership Review, and Cosmos Journal, among others. And her recent book, Emerge, the Rise of Functional Democracy in the Future of the Middle East won first runner-up in the Horizon Awards for Culture, recognizing her superior work as a debut author. Uh, her work with cultures and organizations has garnered the admiration, admiration of business and political leaders alike. She's currently working on the Arab Mimon Project, AMP, which maps the memetics of the Middle East that will eventually lead to the emergence of peace in the region. More detailed info, info is on the event page that led you here. Okay, mm -hmm. so welcome, 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 Elsa. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate uh, you and Mark inviting me to, to, to this lecture. Okay. I'm very glad that you are here, and mm -hmm. I would... But I wouldn't call it a lecture. Okay. No, I, I would call it think. more of the conversation between... Yeah. Uh, well, some of us are very intelligent anyway. Ah, I know. Yes. So, a little bit of fun we need to yeah. have to. Okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, can I ask the first question? Okay. Um, <laughs> I would like uh, to know, Elsa, I mean, we are calling our series Wisdom Technologies, 
and we invited you in because we know that you are using wisdom technologies in your work. And the question for our viewers is, what kind of wisdom technologies is that? And can you do just 10 sentences or something like that around that? Uh, this is the application of spiral dynamics to large scale uh, design, uh, in short. Uh, uh, and we work in cultures uh, where the, few, the tribal and feudal uh, systems are prevalent. Um, the, the biggest project I, I've, I've been involved in is the Build Palestine Initiative. Uh, it started in 2005. We were invited by a bunch of guys uh, from Integral Salon. And I, see, I think Neri is uh, on the call today. Uh, he's Mary, one of the yeah. smartest. He's one of the smartest and nicest people you can meet in Israel. And uh, he, like many Israelis, want to have uh, the two-state solution and want to, have, uh, to live in harmony with, with the Palestinians. And like many Palestinians, they want to live in harmony uh, with the Israelis. So, uh, um, so I am a student of the history of, of the Middle East with a special focus on the conflict. Um, uh, between Israel and Palestine. And I knew something can about... I a moment? Can I interfere a moment? Uh, you have Palestinian background, haven't you? No, she's... No, no, Lebanon. no. I'm... Oh, okay, but yeah. you are very near in the, in the area. Excuse yes, me. very <laughs> near. So, uh, Bethlehem uh, is three hours from my town, three hours away from my town. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Uh, I, I knew something about the Palestinians, but I, uh, I, I let our host, our Israeli host, uh, tell us more about their Israeli side. Um, so we spent five years working on, on, on the conflict. In the first two years, we, uh, we, we listened with empathy and, assessing, and we assessed where to start who we can work with and who we can't. So you see, when, when you decide to engage uh, the culture, uh, it is the most common need you begin to create. Uh, uh, it's the, the, most common, um, the, the most common need you begin to, uh, where you begin to create change. Mm -hmm. So there's a model we call do you want to talk? No, no I just uh, I was just helping you s say what you were trying to say. <laughs> yeah. okay. Okay. So uh, th there's a model we call the five deep strategy. We we go five, five beyond deep strategy. Five deep strategy. So we go beyond the surface manifestation of behaviors and actions, like the UN and the Quartet. So th there there. Their, their, uh, these treaties failed miserably. Uh, and we go beyond uh, the surface to the, the, the life conditions of and the challenges of the Palestinian people. Um, and we, we assess those life conditions and we work uh, uh, through them, through the local people, on, on what they think their, their problems are not what we think, what we project their problems are. So during the first two years, you want me to continue? Uh, I have a question. Uh, you yes. mentioned, of course, uh, the failed attempts at peace that have that come up periodically and they're very short-lived or they go nowhere. And I think a lot of people in our audience might know about the Camp David Accords and what happened after everybody shook hands and went home. Can, can you explain uh, from, from the spiral dynamics point of view how, what, so, what that failure uh, consisted yeah. of? So there's a lot of asymmetry between Israel and, and Palestine. For some reason, Israel is 
an orange enterprising scientific world with a dense blue uh, uh, blue system order driven uh, they have lots of uh, everybody is equal under the law so uh, and they have great institutions as well and on the palestinian side our palestinian partners told us that they 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 are the center of gravity of the Palestinian people is red, egocentric, uh, male, chauvinist uh, patriarchy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you can see there's an asymmetry between the orange system or the enterprising system and the, the, this level of red egocentric patriarchy. Mm -hmm. So we tried to build capacities in the Palestinian culture and we focused more on the Build Palestine initiative to build capacities in the Palestinian culture. And we invited uh, uh, Cisco and Google. Uh, so whenever uh, Google uh, goes to Egypt, they go immediately to, to Palestine. Oh, good. So um, in the in the two years, we trained people who we thought had a chance in making a difference in how to reframe the conflict through the Beck Graves model. Uh, if you're familiar with the Beck Graves model, uh, uh, it's it's a it's a developmental model yes. that. Uh, up a moment and okay. just acknowledge our viewers who showed up by ways by ways of comments. There's Scott Marshall. There's Alin Munch. There's Henrik Wegmark and John Freeman, there's Mel Mel, Ella Falk, Falkrain, Susan Wolpert, and Margarita and Becky Coleman and co-creating Pananthropolis and Sue Ashton said they would watch and many others. So welcome here and please ask your questions mm -hmm. directly to Elsa, okay? Yeah, these are the people who have left comments. Of course, there are many people watching who aren't commenting, they're just watching. Okay. So that was interesting. You said whenever uh, Western, uh, some of the agreeing Western media come to say Egypt, they also have agreed to go to Palestine at the same time. Actually, uh, 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 Google comes to Egypt and Google goes to Palestine. It's 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 a it's a Google is a yellow uh, yellow system. Sure. Uh, oh, I see. I, as a system, it does this automatically, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Got it. Um, so, uh, we, we, we asked... Uh, oh. Yeah, I want to uh, uh, highlight this. Aline said, hello, Elsa Malouf. We have met in New York, July 2007, during a training with Dr. John Beck in Spiral Dynamics. So, you are known even between our audience already. <laughs> Thank you, Eileen. Thank you. Um, so we we asked uh, we we told our uh, our Israeli partners that we need to focus on building capacities in Palestine because of that asymmetry that we noticed and we knew that before we got involved uh, with the Palestinians. Um, okay, just to be, just to be clear, you said because of the as asymmetry between yeah. the Israelis and the Palestinians. Is that yes. what you said? So okay. when they sit at the negotiation table, you know, they're like this. Yeah. Palestinians are here and Israelis are here. So they don't sit at, at, at the same level. So these Palestinians, the, the negotiators, go back to Palestine and they fail miserably. And these Israeli negotiators go back to Israel and they fail miserably. And that's why Camp David, the Oslo Accord, uh, the, uh, the many accords did not uh, fail miserably yeah. because of that asymmetry. Mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, and I'm wondering uh, if you see any recent movement on either side that would indicate that maybe they're talking more to each other than past each other, shall we say? Um, unfortunately, I, uh, the, the Palestinian people 
excuse me, don't trust Abbas. They think he's a weak leader, uh, and uh, and they they have cronies around him. Okay, I'm sorry. You you were a little hard to understand there. They do not trust who? Uh, the the uh, president Mahmoud Abbas. Okay. President of Pal uh, of the Palestinian Authority. Mm -hmm. So uh, they they think that he's weak and uh, he has cronies around him. Mm -hmm. And on the Israeli side, I don't think many people trust uh, uh, Netanyahu, the prime minister. Uh, well, so <laughs> that's not very hopeful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unfortunately, it's not. But we, 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 when, uh, when the funds uh, dwindle up in in two thousand and eight. We, we kept in touch with, uh, with our partners in Palestine and in touch with our partners in, in Israel as well. So, um, uh, for three years we, we trained our partners in Palestine uh, to become indigenous intelligence experts. Let me explain. This is a very uh, important uh, term of our framework. Uh, actually, that I added to, to the Beck Grace framework. Uh, these are smart people that know the, their cultures and they can explain it to us and to the West. So uh, these IIEs are, uh, are uh, so they, they, they would go uh, out to the villages and engage the people in conversation on what matters to them and to the future of their kids. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh. there is okay. a, a wonderful comment from Mel. He says, "As a Maluf, peace in this world is hard to come by." Thank you for all that you do to make it possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, I really that. Oh, and our friend Scott Marshall. We keep interrupting you because we want to acknowledge. You know the input from other people besides the three of us. <laughs> Scott Marshall says it is orange versus red capacity building. Would yes. you say that capacity building is more of your focus than conflict resolution? Absolutely, capacity building is is our focus. It is uh, it is how to to build capacity uh, from from the young age from the kids of, the, of young age in the Palestinian community because until they have that blue, that order driven, that everybody is equal under the law, that uh, the, the, the institutions uh, from, from the egocentric leader to the, to the power of institutions, uh, they will never have that uh, uh, the, the, the allegiance to uh, to 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 the, to nation, they will nation. Have, they will never have patriotism. They will never have uh, just like the rest of the Middle East. Palestine is not the only uh, uh, the the only country that is in shambles. Lebanon, uh, Syria, uh, uh, Iraq, uh, uh, and and Egypt, they have to build that blue. Before, so uh, what blue is shortly? Uh, blue. From the charismatic uh, red leader, the egocentric leader, to the power of institutions. So once they build that, those institutions, they can build nations. Absolutely, thank you. Yep. Yeah, that's in a nutshell. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so, now shifting away from the uh, 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 so gradually the conversation uh, the conversation went from shifting away from the occupation of the Israelis to we want honest uh, uh, politicians we want to end corruption uh, we want paved roads <laughs> uh, we want good health care so we want to rely on Israelis for uh, too much so they want uh, they want what we all want. They're human beings, the, uh, so uh, and with with master's degrees and PhDs. Uh, so when when they wanted to take us to to the wall, I refused. 
I said the, the, the wall of separation. Yes. I, I, I said no. I said I see highly intelligent people with master's degrees and PhDs and uh, college education. Uh, uh, and I said I refuse to go to the wall and until you create a development roadmap uh, to, uh, uh, in your uh, a development roadmap to Palestine, to Palestinian uh, freedom and Palestinian nationhood, you can't, you, you cannot break the wall. So you're saying they need, that Palestine needs to develop itself regardless of the outside circumstances yes. that it has traditionally concerned itself with. Absolutely. Okay. And now, with the with the with the rise of the Arab Spring, unfortunately, Palestine is forgotten. the the Israeli The Israeli Palestinian conflict. Uh, there are no two state solutions, uh, so it's it's forgotten, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, not just the Arab Spring, but the whole rise of ISIS in the past several months. That is, you know, uh, changed which I think probably every every government in the Middle East, you know, fears and hates. Yeah, and, and I... Can th you yes, envision a, a solution or something? Yeah. The question, how do you see that? Mm -hmm. And how can you use your technologies, wisdom, and knowledge to address that? Okay, so let me talk about the situation in uh, throughout the Arab, the Arab Spring, or what we call the Arab Winter, actually. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, in, in Tunisia, there is a constitutional uh, republic, uh, and the president-elect uh, was able to include the Muslim Brotherhood uh, in in the in the government because they were moderate. So Tunisia is a is a special uh, model uh, for the rest of the Arab world, um, and unfortunately, you know what's happening in Syria right now, and Iraq is is going to be divided into three sections actually, uh, uh, if not, uh, it it has been divided already. Yes. So uh, my focus is more on Egypt. Uh, the one person, one vote brought the Muslim Brotherhood, which really did not succeed at, at all. And the military had to topple uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. And now they're, I think they're, uh, uh, they're hanging uh, mercy. So, so, uh, anyway, um, uh, so uh, Al Sisi is. is um, is very important for uh, is very important for Egypt right now. Uh, he's the president of Egypt. Yeah. He seems to be right, the right leader for now. Uh, a lot of people criticize him for his human rights uh, activity uh, record, but uh, for now he's what Egypt needs. You get the corruption with most red leaders throughout the Middle East, and uh, uh, this isn't. Uh, this isn't the world media. Uh, why isn't the world media focusing on the uh, development plans of the future of Egypt? Uh, so Egypt's answer to violence to raise the standard of uh, ah, you're gone. No, we're, we're, we're here. Oh, okay. Something's happening, but we're yeah. here. So okay. Uh, most Egyptians live under five dollars in poverty, and uh, the president Al Sisi wants to raise uh, their uh, their wages uh, uh, and and give them something to uh, and give them subsidies to work with. Uh -huh. so, and now Syria is a completely different problem. The dynamics are bloodier. And you have Iran, who's supporting uh, the Assad regime, and Hezbollah in Lebanon, uh, mm -hmm. supporting Assad. Uh, you have different factions who just want to get rid of uh, Assad 
uh, and, Syri uh, and, and the Syrian Free Army, they have no one leader to account for. We wa uh, the, the Americans wanted to help the, the, the Syrian Free Army, but they have no leaders uh, to, uh, th that they can account for. Um, so, and when, the, when there's a vacuum in, uh, in power, Say that see, again. Okay, so when there's a vacuum in power, vacuum I can steps in, mm -hmm. and you you know what's happening in Syria. So the ISIL uh, was joined by the f uh, former Saddam generals, who were very angry when the Americans dismantled the ba uh, the Ba'ath army. Big mistake. Yes, absolutely. We, we, we should not have uh, uh, dismantled the Ba'ath army B because, you know, uh, they need to put food uh, at the table and they didn't have any, any ways or means to put food uh, in front of their kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, uh, I see why... Uh, uh, okay. So, what, what we do... Uh, we don't teach people how to fish. Uh, we don't give them fish. We we create the pond where fish can come. <laughs> Nicely. So we create yeah. the habitat yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. where fish can come. Right. This is really a truly integral approach. Yeah, it yeah. is wonderful, and I of course the same. <clears throat> The same uh, process could occur on the Israeli side, but I, I think you said earlier you'd rather <coughs> they speak about that rather than you. Is that correct? Uh, yes, absolutely. So the indigenous intelligence experts are uh, are the ones who 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 speak. Uh, uh, we, we're behind the scenes. We're always behind the scene, and they're the ones who speak for us, not not us. Well, your book has been so well received. I was reading a, a couple reviews very recently, and it was glowing with, with praise. Uh, and and uh, I know it's also a big fat book <laughs> that you've spent a lot of time yeah. uh, uh, researching. Uh, and I, I imagine the publication and reception of the book has has probably changed your life in some ways. Uh, could you speak to, to that? Actually, it was the cherry on the top of the ice uh, ice cake. <laughs> <laughs> Good, <laughs> wonderful. It, it, it's really my life story. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's you know, uh, I I uh, I grew up during the civil war uh, in so Lebanon. Lebanon, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it it lasted almost seventeen years. Yeah. And uh, I saw uh, my uh, my my boyfriend Carlos dismembered, uh, yeah. uh, and uh, he, his mom called me, and she said, "Come to the hospital, to the makeshift hospital. Carlos is dying." So uh, I went there and I I started questioning God. Who's the God? Who's the Muslim God? Who? who wants to, to kill uh, Christian people, and who's the Christian God who wants to kill Muslim people? I, I couldn't understand, so I, I delved into the, um, uh, the, the tafsirat, or the explanation of Sheikh Subhi Saleh, and, um, and I delved into the, the, the Bible, uh, and uh, by the end of it, I became an atheist. I became an existentialist. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Orange. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's modern life. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, you know, uh, and, you know, I got married the first time, and thank God for Saeed, he rescued me. Uh, <laughs> uh, and here we are now. Yeah, amazing. It's been quite a story for you. Yeah. Uh, right. So you you were uh, a Christian in Lebanon, and we heard you know 
so long what a model Lebanon was, where where Muslims and Christians lived side to side peacefully. Yes. Well, they did until they didn't, I guess, huh? Yeah. Exactly. We we didn't know. I mean, we had Muslim uh, kids in uh, in in Catholic school, uh, and we didn't know they were Muslims. Mm -hmm. They went with us to the church. They went with us everywhere. So we didn't know they were Muslims. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, but but Lebanon is still precariously independent. Um, a lot of Hezbollah influence. Uh, I don't really know much about uh, the the other aspects of, of Lebanese politics these days. Uh, uh, we, we don't have a president, you know, it's been two, two and a half years, we don't have a president. Mm -hmm. uh, Hezbollah is, is keeping uh, uh, Lebanon hostage. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, ISIL is in, uh, inside uh, the northern part of, uh, of the Bekaa Valley. Uh, it's it's like a f uh, few miles away from you, my you, town. You, you broke up there. Did you say in the northern part of the Bekaa Valley? Of the Bekaa Valley. Okay. So it's a few miles from my town. It's mm -hmm. like a couple of miles from my town. Mm -hmm. uh, and my town is the largest Catholic city in, uh, uh, in the Middle East. Yeah. And what city is that? It's Zahli. Don't know it. <laughs> yeah, it's it. Yeah. Uh, so, um, what was I saying? Uh, we were talking about the current situation in Lebanon. Yeah. Uh, so there's a va there's a there is no president elect. Uh, there's a vacuum of the presidency. Hezbollah is keeping uh, um, uh, Lebanon hostage. And ISIL is in Arsal, a few miles away from my town, uh, and uh, they captured seven um, uh, army members, and uh, Hezbollah refuses to to give them what uh, what they need to to release uh, the army members. Uh -huh. So it's that tense in uh, around in the Bekaa Valley. Yeah. Uh, and Hezbollah is supported by Iran, I understand. And I'm wondering, what is Iran's interest in doing that? Is it just because of who Hezbollah opposes, or what? What forces? Uh, what forces are there at work? You know, they're letting Arabs do the work for them. Yeah. So Hezbollah is the Shia crescent. You know, Hezbollah, Assad, uh, uh, Iran. The Houthis, the Bahrainis, the, they're all over the place. Yes. The Houthis in Yemen, the Bahrainis, uh, the, they're mostly Shia, uh, Iran, uh, Assad, and Hezbollah. So mm -hmm. they're letting the Arabs do their dirty work. Yeah. Uh, that's an old story, isn't it? Yes, it is an old story. But it, it's, it's not a power between uh, uh, um, Sunni and Shia. No. It, it's not. It's not looking like this. It it is the orange strategic power mm -hmm. that the, the 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 Shia wants, mm -hmm. and the orange strategic power that the Sunni wants. Yeah, I think that's really important to uh, to underscore that the the uh, the conflict in the Middle East is not basically between Shia and Sunni, just as the conflict in South Africa so well documented was not between various ethnic groups, but between uh, levels of consciousness, exactly. levels of development. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think our audience uh, could really appreciate uh, you going into a bit of detail on why it is not a matter of Shia, Shia versus Sunni. Okay. So I have Shia friends and Sunni friends they they were orange strategic uh, and they they were even green and egalitarian humanitarian uh, so and they, they share I have shared values with my Shia friends and, and Sunni friends uh, 
-hmm. So it's it's uh, it's Al Jazeera influences a lot uh, the uh, the whole Middle East. Mm -hmm. So it influences. Uh, the people on the street, the people whom you see, you know, yelling and screaming and burning the American flag, which comes f usually from China. They burn the American flag. <laughs> uh, and uh, um, y those people are the flamethrowers and the zealots. In, uh, in, in the assimilation contrast effect, uh, those people are the flamethrowers and the zealots. And they go uh, 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 and the ideologues, and they go against. Uh, the, there's an inter conflict between one party, and there's an intra conflict between another party. Two things so, going on. Two conflicts. Yes. So mm -hmm. the inter conflict between the flamethrowers, zealots, and ideologues, and some of the moderates, they 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 consider. The, the moderates and, uh, and pragmatists and conciliators, the enemy. They put them in the enemy camp. Sure, because they're and, moderate. So yes, they're, and they're against the they're they're against the extremists. Exactly. And on the other side, the same thing happens. Flamethrowers, zealots, ideologues, and half of the moderates go against uh, uh, the uh, these uh, the pragmatists and conciliators. And they put them in the enemy camp. Yeah. So it's it's really a level of consciousness that uh, matters at the end. So mm -hmm. these flamethrowers are totally red, egocentric, patriarchy, uh, and and the the zealots are red and unhealthy blue. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. ideologues unhealthy blue. When we met Hamas. <laughs> When we, uh, I'm they, sorry, when we met what? When we met Hamas. Okay, uh, Hamas, okay. The, 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 the party that is against Israel and against, uh, uh, against the United States, of course. Uh, when we met them, they thought they were green. As long as uh, Jews, Christians, and women don't have a say. Sure. <laughs> So they were definitely red and, and with unhealthy group. Sure. So the, their circle of care was restricted, but within that circle they considered themselves quite progressive. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> when, when they came in in the door, uh, da, uh, Dan Beck said, uh, I felt my grandfather coming into the door. So they were very organized. They sat in a hierarchical manner. Uh, one person read from uh, from uh, top level to bottom, uh, and uh, they wanted to ask Don two questions. Uh, I said no, just one, because they didn't shake my hand. So they mm -hmm. wanted to ask Don two questions. I said no, just one question. And I interrupted one person, when, and I said no, no, just one question. <laughs> so you made yourself known and felt. Absolutely. Wonderful. I would like to bring up some comments we had here from Scott, for instance. What's he saying? Uh, wait a minute. Oops, it's backwards. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Scott, our friend, says the Middle East situation always seems more complicated than my mind can understand. What are some ways for people to find out more about what they can do to support your projects? Um, you can read my book, Scott. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it everything is in in that book because I I go through uh, the spiral dynamics model and uh, I explain uh, the different levels especially uh, specifically for the Middle East uh, uh, the power of Nasserism the power of Um Kalthum that trailed up uh, the, the, the 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 Arab street um, and. Uh, and I go in detail about uh, the, the, the Pal uh, our Palestinian uh, project and the Build Palestine uh, initiative as well. And you can get involved in the Arab Memo project. It's an ambitious project that uh, it takes a an hour to talk about. 
<laughs> we should we should say, put some links in yes, the descriptions for that. So tell tell us a little about your book. Wait and wait how wait people, a minute. Just right. another comment because oh, okay. some of the people are still here. There uh -huh. was a, a a problem here in the transmission. It was frozen for a while, but somebody is still here and figured it out how to keep staying in. So Brian mm -hmm. McConnell. Says, it seems to me that the orange modern scientific worldview associated with Israel, Israeli operations, is largely driven by competition. I wonder how, in your effort to build capacity, you empo empower Palestinians to meet their needs without threatening Israelis' interests and subjecting them to retribution. Subjecting is that would be Palestinians to retribution. Uh, well, Brian, uh, we we do work with our Palestinian partners uh, on on building capacities in their own uh, domain. So, spiral dynamics is widely taught in uh, 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 now uh, uh, in schools and uh, and uh, Abdel Majid Suwaiti, our our partner, uh, still teaches it. In um, in different parts of uh, the of the West Bank, uh, so uh, uh, so we need to be, uh, to build the blue. We need to build uh, the these institutions in order for, uh, uh, for for the Palestinian people to have nation uh, a nation state. Until we build that blue. We cannot have anything. Uh, uh, um, we, we cannot build the the orange scientific on top of it. Step so, by step by step. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, so they, they, they're uh, you know they tell us that they are centered in tribal and feudal uh, societies. Yeah. They, they the Palestinians tell us. So until yes. they build that blue, they cannot. Uh, they cannot uh, really have the two-state solution. Yeah. You have to have two states in order to have a two-state solution. Yeah. We still have about seven minutes. Yeah. So you wanted to ask another question about the book? Well, uh, I was following up on Scott's question, how can we learn more about this? And obviously there's your book, and perhaps you'd like to uh, tell people uh, how to get that. or. Uh, Perhaps uh, send them to other resources that uh, uh, would be helpful. And uh, of course, it would be, you know, spoken and hard to remember too much. But if you put them in, we can fill fill in links later on. So we uh, what what we do in the Arab Nimun project, we create uh, the mimetic profiles of every country in the Middle East with 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 little tweaking, you know. So. This country uh, uh, is uh, uh, center of gravity is red with a little bit of blue with a little bit of orange. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so we create the, the mimetic history of, of the region. Um, the, let, I'll just read it. <laughs> you cheated, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Cheating is permitted. Okay. <laughs> So uh, we create the mimetic profile of the country, selecting, uh, we select the indigenous intelligence experts, uh, we identify prevailing, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh, technology, oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. Not okay. to worry. Just out of your mind, yes. you know it so well. So yes. you're in the, you're deeply embedded in all this, <laughs> so you, you can just so, say. Uh, we uh, identify prevailing value systems and life conditions. It's the five uh, five deep strategy as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we understand the nature of conflicting intra versus inter. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> thank you, Saeed. Uh, we put it all in perspective. We we create the VAS model, or uh, the VAS model is the assimilate. Uh, fr uh, it came from social judgment theory and uh, uh, the spectrum of values. 
So Don added to it the spectrum of values. Social judgment the theory is Muzaffar Sheriff uh, and Carolyn Sheriff theory. Uh, um, they were Don's advisors on his PhD thesis in Oklahoma oh. State. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and and Don added to it the Graves model. He put the he put the colors on the spiral, so it became a, a completely red flamethrowers, uh, red unhealthy blue uh, zealots, uh, ideologues unhealthy blue. Uh, uh, moderates, uh, half of them are uh, healthy blue, half of them are uh, unhealthy blue, so half of them are healthy blue. Uh, now you come to pragmatists, are, uh, they're orange, and conciliators are green. Uh -huh. So he added the colors to, to, the, uh, to, the, to the assimilation contrast effect. And of course, if we want to get granular, there are degrees of green and orange as well. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Said. Sorry. I think we can at this point yeah. say that your husband Said will be next week in our show and he will talk about economic and new economic system and about the development of economic systems. What? And We're talking to Said next week? Yes, come on. Oh, all right. I just want everyone to hear that loud and clear. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> he is in the background of Elsa. Yes, okay. <laughs> So, and it's so lovely to know that you both are working together in some way. Everybody has his own topic, but that you are a collaborating couple. Yes. And I hope you have as much fun working together as we do. <laughs> Not we, more, though. No. We have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are having fun creating yes, these things do. which we are doing yeah. here. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, as we are sort of at the end of our session, I would like to try, yes, I have the lower third on which I had in the beginning because I want to tell people uh, where actually, they can go, what will follow up. Uh, actually, One I, is here on top of, uh, pardon? Uh, Heidi, I was for the longest time a closet with the right, by the way. What did you say? Something, I didn't understand you. I, I was for Something the on the right. Time, I was for the longest time a closet Wilburite. Uh, uh, Ken Wilbur. A clo oh, you were, you, were, you were on the right politically, but in the closet. Yeah. Is that what you meant? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I read oh. the Goose and Grit, okay. I, uh, I read the Theory of Everything, and I met uh, Ken for the first time when I attended the, one of the first integral leadership seminars uh, in Denver. Uh -huh. All right. So I, I did read well, you know. Elder's works and uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think we everybody have gone through all these stages in more or less good way <laughs> and then All right. I voted for Bush twice. <laughs> Sorry. Why? Twice. Yes. Until he got into integral uh, box. About ten a, years ago. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he changed. I didn't know him yet. I know him only because we are talking. We were talking in social media about integral topics. And the, there the interest came, you know. And so mm -hmm. now we are together and we are creating this show because it's something we can do together apart from the relationship courses yeah. which we want to do yeah. sooner or later. Surely. <laughs> Now I wanted to bring up this uh, lower third here, and because on top of me there is a bit.ly link, b i t l dot l y mm -hmm. slash i a w a p k e. Mm -hmm. I and awake. Yes. yes, and I invite you to go there. Who is listening and find a way to get into. Higher levels of consciousness, you can say. Yes. At the long run, it will lead everybody there, I would say. Yes, okay. Right. And then Audio <laughs> technology that will change your head. Yeah, yes. It is done by uh, John Dupuis. He was opening our first, uh, our second season of the right. Wisdom Factory in May, mm -hmm. only about two months ago. So initiated our technology approach. To yes, things. and we did it with real, real 
technology, technical <laughs> technology. <laughs> Hard, yeah, metal. <laughs> yeah, okay, and then I want to talk about the other link, which is up here. I actually can, cannot see it, but it should be bit.ly slash wisdom, this is wisdom, and then gold, G. O L D. For Mission me, this gold. is a spelling lesson. You know, I'm <laughs> not uh, speaking English as my first <laughs> language, so I try to do that. So this is uh, the wisdom goal. This will be after we have finished the second season. Season. We will offer a free training guided by Lawrence Gold in his very amazing wisdom technologies, and we had already two episodes with him. Go to our YouTube channel and watch them. And the, one of them, there was Scott, who had uh, yes, who had comments, who yeah, had comments before, and he was one of the guinea pigs. And if you want to be a guinea pig yourself, opt in this or leave your address yeah. in this. I would say students, not guinea pigs. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean guinea pig in the sense. That that you can experience yes, his uh, processes. Mm -hmm. And leave your address there, and when we have uh, stabilized when exactly it will begin and how it will be, it will be a free training, but not public like these Hangouts. So we really need a group of committed people to stay with us during this training. Yeah. So if okay. you're interested, please leave your address there, and you will hear from us. Yes, okay. you will. Mm -hmm. This is so far as I have to say. Next week, we yep. know that is Said with us, mm -hmm. Said Labani, mm -hmm. Elsa's husband. And Elsa, at this point, I would like to ask you what? Shall I ask or you? This is always the question. Yeah, Who has I, the word? <laughs> well, I, I was going to ask something else, actually. Oh, probably. So you go else. ahead. Okay, go I ahead. would like mm -hmm. to ask you a sort of final word, what you really are. Uh, burning for to let people know? Um, really, my work uh, influences my inner work as well. So uh, not only I, 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 I do meditate an uh, uh, Eastern practice, but also my work in the outer world influences my inner world uh, as well. So um, uh, through it, I I can I raise my consciousness, and uh, uh, th through the outer work, also I, I raise my consciousness. So what I want people to know is that they can contribute to to uh, to the work I'm doing um, um, through just just positive thoughts through uh, sending their consciousness to Palestinians, sending their consciousness to Israelis, and just loving everybody, really. Because uh, if, if we can't have peace uh, in anywhere in the world, we should have peace in our hearts. We, sh we should create uh, the peace that we can create in our hearts. Yeah, and, and I would... I would like even go um, further and I would say we can only create peace in the world if we have created peace in our hearts and in our relationships. Absolutely, absolutely. And I would like to tell them to go to buildpalestine.org for pictures and uh, anything else they want to do. Buildpalestine.org. We will write it into that. Yes, we will. Okay. All right. So, so your last question? What is uh, that? Well, I you mentioned her husband, Said Dalabani, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to scream out the name of his book for people to remember, Memonomics. And then there's more after that, but Memonomics will get you there. Yes. <laughs> Thank and you so, very much for having me, Heidi and Mark. I, I really appreciate that. Oh. And thank you very oh, much yes. to have been with us and yeah. overcome all these technical things mm -hmm. which are around <laughs> yep. all the time. And yeah. I hope our viewers too, some were, didn't, couldn't see you for a while, and I hope it seems to work now. So mm -hmm. here we are. And everybody can watch the replay.
Yep, bye. Okay, so thank you very much. I will stop the podcast now. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.